Welcome, my name is uh, Nick Bendegiesen and I'm Professor of Water Resource Management at Delft University of Technology. And I will present the Trans-African Hydrometeorological Observatory, or TAMO. Together with colleagues at Oregon State University, we are trying to build a self-sustaining observation network of weather and water management stations. I will talk about the design of the stations, the educational aspects of the program, and some first ideas about the business side. First, this map of the world's meteorological organization showing the operational weather stations that feed our global weather predictions. Blue stations are functioning 100%, the rest less or not at all. As you can see, Sub-Saharan Africa is particularly sparsely equipped. This negatively affects accuracy of weather prediction and management of water resources. The idea is to leapfrog and make Africa the best monitored continent through a network of 20,000 stations. For several reasons, we cannot use standard equipment. The, post, the cost of a standard weather station are between $5,000 and $15,000. This would be prohibitively expensive. Moreover, such stations demand specialized technicians for their maintenance. This is why we are looking for low-cost and robust weather stations that hardly need maintenance. There should, for example, be no moving parts. As you can see in this picture from Ghana, insects tend to build nests in and around such moving parts, thereby rendering them worthless. Similarly, a standard weather station has a nice and well-ventilated screened housing for temperature and relative humidity. When we open such a housing in Ghana, we notice a whole web of caterpillars around the sensors. We also want to reduce the cost of our stations. This is a typical research-grade radiation sensor that costs about $6,000. By using mass-produced sensors, we hope to significantly reduce the costs. For example, this Zytem TN9, which is normally used in non-contact medical thermometers, can accurately measure long-wave radiation as a fraction of the cost of an official radiation sensor. A nice example is the measurement of rainfall, probably the single most important weather variable in the African context. Ideally, one would not only want to know how much rain falls, but also what the distribution is of the drop sizes, because that is important for, for example, erosion studies. Instruments that measure the size distribution of raindrops cost $10,000 and up. So we asked one of our students, Koen Degen, to come up with a robust design without moving parts. After trying several materials, he came up with this simple piezoelectric element, which can be found in any smoke alarm and costs about $1. Such an element produces an electrical signal when it is mechanically excited. In other words, when a drop falls on it, a signal will be produced. The bigger the drop, the bigger the signal. In this calibration curve, you can see that there's a very nice correlation between the drop size and the signal strength. Still, there's a lot of work to do, which is why we are linking up with companies like Decagon and IBM to speed up the development of our network. A second important feature of TAMO is our educational angle. Weather stations typically need fences and dedicated caretakers. Our idea is to link up with schools by placing the station at schools. Uh, we provide them with protection against theft and vandalism. In return, the schools will have access to the data and to a complete set of educational materials. We've done some early pilots in Ghana to see what needs to be done to include weather and water stations in the curriculum. We are also piloting a school-to-school -school program in which richer schools pay for two weather stations, one to be installed at their own school and the second one at the relatively poor school in rural Africa. This will then be followed by lectures on climate, water and weather and the exchange of information between the sister schools. The first exchange will start this year between schools in Idaho and Kenya. We are also developing cooperation between African universities in support of TAMO. Last year, we ran a sensor design competition. Teams were to design new sensors along these TAMO design criteria. First, we asked interested partners to register, followed by sending in their first designs. We had 43 registrants, resulting in 23 designs. One example of such a design was the idea from Nigeria to weigh the desiccant that one needs anyway to protect the electrical circuit. The weight would follow the relative humidity of the air. It is an interesting example of how to leverage items that are already on board anyway, like the desiccant. In this case, we would have an ex extra check on the functioning of more standard relative humidity sensors. Another example was the idea by Gilbert Mwangi and Ko Ken uh, Ojambo from Kenya to determine wind speed and direction by measuring the movements of a fl flag. Strictly speaking, this design doesn't have moving parts, the flag, but a relatively robust one. And then again, who doesn't like a flag? 
13 teams with the most interesting designs then received a maker package, which included general electronics such as the Arduino microcontroller and many tools to actually build the designs they had made. Eight teams were invited to the final in Nairobi in August 2013. There, at the IHOP Innovation Center, the teams built their sensor and integrated them through a Raspberry Pi computer that uploaded all the data to IBM's online system for data and operations. In addition to the special design and the educational activities within TAMO, special attention is being paid to the development of business cases. Many people we talk to tell us that gathering data on weather and water is something the government should do. Ah, that may be true, but over the past decades, we've only witnessed a decline in environmental monitoring networks around the globe. Data gathering is not something which politicians like to do. They cannot win the hearts of the voters with monitoring weather. So we are trying to develop public-private partnerships and business cases that can earn sufficient money to build and operate TAMO stations. The financial numbers are significant, but not staggering. It is probably necessary to start off on the basis of some grants and subsidies. To live longer, however, than the grants allow, TAMO would need to be financially sustaining, self-sustaining. The potential is there. In the United States, it is estimated that the economic value of weather data and predictions are about $31 billion per year. In Africa, we would only need to capture a small part of this value to maintain the program that we have. All along the chain, from weather station installation operation to data analysis and forecasts, people need to have some incentive to continue to operate the TAMO network. One possible business case would be community, commodity traders. To know the status of a growing crop of cotton or cocoa gives important financial advantages with respect to hedging. A fraction of these advantages would suffice to upkeep the whole TAMO system. Very promising is also index-based weather insurance, whereby farmers insure their inputs and insurance companies pay out when rain fails. Whether or not rain fails is determined by a nearby weather station. We now partner with Kilimo Salama in Kenya, an insurer who leverages the possibility of mobile phone networks to sell insurance and organize payments. In conclusion, we think that TAMO will be able to let Africa leapfrog in the field of weather and water monitoring. By combining innovative design with education and business, the TAMO network will provide excellent information services. If you are interested, please visit our website or send us a mail. Thank you for listening. In the next web lectures, we will have a closer look at TAMO and assess it from the perspective of creating conditions for economic growth and inclusive development and the need for standards.